Hi, this is Roger, and these are my videos on fitness, health, and nutrition. This week, I want to tackle something that's a little bit complicated, but I will try to make it as simple as possible to the best of my understanding and ability, and that's high-fat, low-carbohydrate diets. I actually recorded this video a couple of times before, went back and looked at it, looked at the research, and decided I wasn't doing justice to actually what the science says, because I want to get that part right. What's the part of, or what's the whole point of jumping on another fan bandwagon when the science doesn't support it and you're just sort of getting caught up in something that people are saying are good and may not actually be good for you? So I'm going to concentrate on just three studies. Number one, they took a bunch of college age athletes. And this is important to recognize that these people are college age and that they're athletic. They were already uh, training and heavily involved in fitness. So if you are not already heavily involved in fitness, maybe you're just getting started or thinking about getting started, this result may not be applicable to you. Uh, and you'll see what I mean later when we talk about the study that's done with obese people. So these college age athletes are given a very low fat, uh, sorry, a very high fat, low carbohydrate diet. So the carbohydrates are brought way, way down and the calories they're getting from fat are brought up. What happened? After several weeks of training, they had improvements in their good HDL cholesterol. So that's excellent. They had improvement in the testosterone level and that's excellent if you're an athlete. Testosterone helps you uh, get that drive to compete. It also helps you build muscle. Um, their anti-inflammatory factors were up. And um, there's an interesting study I'm going to throw in a bit about here. There's a mouse study done that showed that this um, high fat, low carbohydrate diet actually helps with bone formation. Not a human study, a mouse study though. Um, one thing though, and their insulin was down. And you want to keep your insulin down because insulin is what causes uh, diabetes. Insulin is also what causes um, obesity. Uh, it drives sugar into the cells and the cells turn that into fat. And that's one of the ways in which you get obese is taking extra calories and sugar. So all those indicators came uh, down or into a healthy direction. One indicator, the triglycerides went up. Now that's usually an unhealthy indicator, but that's not a problem. Once again, these were college age guys. They were, uh, they were very, very active, so high triglycerides wasn't a problem for them. All right, second study went and looked at obese people. So they got a range of people from people in their 20s up to people in their 60s, and they were already obese, and they gave them this very high fat, low carbohydrate diet. At the end of 12 weeks, no significant weight loss. And I want you to remember that, no significant weight loss, because that's important. We'll come back to that fact, fact later. They had improvements in their high density cholesterol, so their good cholesterol went up. Some of their inflammation markers went down. One went up, but most of them went down. So overall, it's good for inflammation. Now, reducing inflammation is important too. That means your joints will stay healthy and you're less likely to get obese. Um, their triglycerides actually improved. So once again, see how the studies can be contradictory? In the college-aged youth, the triglycerides went up. Probably a good thing for them. They're very active. They're going to burn off those extra calories that those triglycerides represent. In the obese people, tr triglycerides came down. That's absolutely excellent news for them. No significant weight loss, however, during the duration of the study. No change in uh, hip to waist ratio. That's sort of measure of how obese you are over the study. So they got some improvements in health by following this high fat, low carbohydrate diet. Finally, there was a study done which is sort of like a meta-analysis. They looked at a whole bunch of studies and they looked at this sort of high fat, low carbohydrate diets on a whole. And they found out that if you've got really, really low carbohydrates, if you're one of these people that really, really restricts carbohydrates down to like 5% of what you're eating and you're eating lots of fat and lots of proteins, it turns out you're not getting a lot of health benefits you're not even getting an improvement in your insulin resistance. In fact, if you're on a very, very low carbohydrate diet, your insulin resistance actually goes up. Counterintuitive. Now that's for extremely low carbohydrate diet. In the middle, you got some improvements, and in a high carbohydrate diet, you got some deleterious benefits, uh, effects all, all again. So the carbohydrates seem to be one in the middle. So that brings us to the bottom line. What's the bottom line in all this? Well, we already know about carbohydrates. We know we want complex carbohydrates, not simple carbohydrates. What does that mean? It means you want to avoid things with sugar in it. Sugar is bad. There's none of these studies that come out and say, wow, you should be having more sugar in your diet. None of them do. We all know that sugar is bad for you. It is something you gotta have as a treat. I'm not saying no sugar. I love sugar once in a while, but it's gotta be a treat. It can't be something you're taking every day. And that's just the way to be healthy, folks. I'm sorry, it's tough news, but 
sugar is bad for you. Complex carbs, though, seem to be good for you in moderation. What are complex carbs? It's starches your body can't get at right away. In other words, starches that are bound up in fiber, like in fruits, like in vegetables. Uh, and it's also um, uh, things that are high in fiber. Fiber is a carbohydrate as well, too. Those carbohydrates are good for you. None of the studies are saying that those things are bad indicators. What about fats? Well, lots of studies have come, and you're familiar with them talking about bad fats. Those are saturated fats, hard fats, animal fats. So if you're getting a fat and it's in a solid form, like a lard, that's what we call a bad fat. It is not good for you. It'll send your triglycerides up. It'll clog your arteries. Good fats are things like vegetable oils, olive oils, all your nut oils. Those are actually good fats. They get into your body. They actually reduce your inflammation. They don't cause you to gain weight as long as you're not eating um, too many calories for your level of activity. So that's the bottom line, folks. The bad carbohydrates are the simple ones, the sugars. If it's got sugar on the label, particularly in the first few ingredients, it's not a regular food. It's maybe a treat. It's maybe a dessert. And for fats, you want to see polyunsaturated on the label. You want to see monounsaturated and polyunsaturated on the label. You don't want to see on the label saturated. You don't want to see on the label hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated. And if you see on the label trans, put it away, it is poison. A lot of jurisdictions have actually banned trans uh, fats because they're, they're literally poison. Your body doesn't know what to do with them and they have a lot of deleterious effects. So this has been a complicated one. This is Roger with his tip on fitness, health, and nutrition. Be aware of fad diets. Don't jump on the low carb, high fat diet bandwagon because you think it'll work miracles. None of the studies show it working miracles. It can be part of a balanced approach to health, particularly if you're avoiding sugars. Okay, so that's, I guess, about it. I put links to all these studies below. Have a look at them yourself. Read some of the science on the fact. Don't get caught up with websites that are selling you products that are going to lose, give you a, a quick way to lose lots of weight. There is no magic way to lose weight. The weight didn't come on overnight. It doesn't go away overnight. So be patient with your weight loss, folks. Be enthusiastic with your fitness routine. Enjoy the summer. And I hope that you subscribe for more videos. Um, if you have questions about all this stuff, please leave comments below. Leave your questions. I enjoy making these videos for you. I know there's a handful of people who actually uh, uh, watch this and use this as a source of information, and that keeps me going. So thanks, all of you who have been watching. Um, take care, and see you next video. Uh, did I forget? Fresh fruit and exercise. Bye-bye.